The clearest memories I have of my earliest games are those of Street Fighter 2 on the Sega Genesis, a title I'd come to reunite with come the HD remix many years later, where older fans were given the opportunity to finally take the fight online, and in mere seconds of doing so, I was faced with the mordant reality that I suck at fighting games. Come the likes of Ultra Street Fighter 4, 5, and others such as Persona 4 Ultimax, I fought not against characters or players, but the single looming message you don't belong here. No matter how hard I tried to tear down that wall, I remained stagnant as a player and that wasn't very fun. Those experiences weren't alleviated with family members who do nothing but button mash or friends who are too adept for a smooth learning experience. That gap in skill likely served as foundation for my leaning towards titles more aligned around party based designs like Smash. With more leveled fields of play and matches lengthy enough to learn and adapt gradually with. But ARMS doesn't just create a groundwork found laid between both traditional and party oriented fighting games. It pushes the notion of skill while not only moving in tandem with a variety of game types, but reminds me that even the act of losing can be fun and worth experiencing, producing moments of victory that shine even brighter. Certainly loss and competition is not desired, but what joy is there to be had in any sport if the outcomes are easily determined? Even in esports, the attraction that makes it so compelling is not just the level of play, but the story attached to the play players and seeing pros push one another to their absolute limits for the greatest spectacle. It's a message ARMS conveys not through complexity but simplicity, and serves as the inspiration for this video. Despite its label as a fighting game, ARMS is far from traditional, being more akin towards arena brawlers like Power Stone. With its interactive playing fields capable of inducing changes in how players can maneuver environments alongside what strategies are viable, it even includes Smash-styled item drops to damage, heal, paralyze, or speed up players and their special meters. But true to its name, ARMS biggest draw is the trade off of fireballs and combos for two custom ARMS, their loadouts, and the player's unique ability to designate the curvature of their attacks. This alleviates the player's need to recall and learn combos and special skills, and evens the playing field by shifting focus towards player spacing and reading your opponent. It's a straightforward acknowledgement that places everyone on equal footing, so when you lose, you know it's not because of a gap in skill or knowledge of combos and specials, but a gap in the player's ability to read the other player, turning ARMS into a title focused entirely around mind games. The time it takes ARMS to travel and how they correspond to weapon weight and abilities not only grants a great depth to strategy, but gives both players the means to more easily read their enemy's attacks. It's that space of time that grants a heavy focus on player mentality, as combat becomes about manipulating both distraction and reaction for a desired effect, lest your ARMS be met with opposition and flounder. Undoubtedly, this makes the title more appealing for anyone unskilled in the genre, but what makes ARMS experience so endearing is it's online and where the fun truly begins. Before anything even happens, you're kicked into a unique tournament styled lobby and everything afterwards is pure chance. And that is, at least in terms of casual play, the title's core redeeming quality for monotony, and what kept me playing through each test punch session. It's not just a simple showcase of participants, but a spectator's lounge for players to observe the challenges others are engaged in so as to monitor their progress. ARMS isn't just about brawling, but games utilizing hands from the likes of target break to basketball, and they're even blended with co-op and free-for-all. The beauty is it keeps each new battle feeling fresh with slight mix-ups, never giving a single game type a chance to overstay its welcome. Winning or losing gives you varying rewards, and the higher the number, the bigger the target for participants for hopes of claiming the spot of number one. The longer you play, the greater those rewards as they're handed out every few checkpoints. But being number one isn't easy. It asks a certain level of competency for each possible game mode, but even if you're bad in one of them, so long as you're good at the others you still have a shot. But that's what makes the path to victory even more satisfying when done so. There's always something to master and that balance of shifting modes gives every player a chance to excel at something. This results in players settling into a comfort zone that the game hooks them in with so as it can then push them into to improving other areas that all work off the same core mechanics. So while victories in standard brawls may be challenging yet common, they'll never quite come off as satisfying as the hard fought ones in V-Ball, especially if you're challenging another player who is consistently besting you in a single game type, making revenge something to savor. However, it in turn makes those battles against other players of similar skill seemingly less common, yet something more worth cherishing when they do occur. But they're not just good for a challenge. They're 
perfect moments for inciting player rivalries and granting players cause to remain in lobbies longer than previously anticipated, if only to settle the score. That makes the lobby something even greater as it turns even the act of waiting into an active experience of observation. As players track other competitors to monitor their progress and see their potential weaknesses as they shoot for a rematch. That aggression though comes not out of anger but a strive to improve oneself, a healthy and worthwhile choice any developer should hope to instill in its players. But that doesn't mean those moments of players trying to decide who the better Min Min is aren't worth experiencing as it can result in hectic and incredibly engaging bouts between players at the edge of their seats, barely fighting for survival, especially in free for alls. Forced teamwork is surprisingly one of the better choices for newcomers as it gives players a bit of a crutch to rely on, allowing them to relax while still being engaged as they can observe and pick up on more advanced strategies. So come solo play, those victories feel all the more personal as the player relies solely on themselves and their skill level to emerge victorious for higher levels of enjoyment. There is a lot of clever and deliberate design choices to keep that drive moving forward. Wait times are rarely more than a minute for relaxation and matches are your typical 99 seconds to keep things moving at a fast pace and placing the player closer to their next victory. This grants plenty of time of learning in short bursts and is a good reason to include mix-ups to avoid pent-up frustration. In casual play, those items also benefit as a quick pick-me-up to give even weaker players some sort of edge in level playing field. This wondrous cycle ensures the player is always doing something, even in downtime, and encourages the player is always getting better and making those moments of victory greater. The culmination of all these choices and design philosophies is a game where most players, even the beginners, can feel as though they themselves found a competitive title they're good at, allowing them to finish on a high note at any point they desire. Although in reality it's the opposite and they're simply improving bit by bit, yet they still get that pro level satisfaction, something that will make the push forward and reflection on something wonderful for each individual. During my sessions with ARMS, for every loss I accrued I felt not anger or rage, but a desire to improve, a goal to get back in the ring and win. That wall that had blocked me for so long from enjoying competitive aspects of fighting games was seemingly non-existent, perhaps something I'd managed to blow past without even realizing it, and suddenly losing didn't seem like a big deal anymore, but a proposition to get better and keep playing. Something made not only easy to accept, but fun to take on thanks to its clever game design. The pinnacle of those efforts and strides to become and remain king made the struggle for dominance worth cultivating. But the deepest sense of elation came from outmaneuvering and outreading opponents in a way that forced them back into a corner, unable to land a single blow from their distant opponent, knowing they're outmatched before going for the coup de gras. Something that easily remains etched in memory and an experience worth striving for time and time again. These aren't innovative ideas to fighting games, mind you. Things like lobbies have existed for years, but what makes ARMS so special in this regard is its structure on spacing and outsmarting the enemy, creating moments of successful distraction and reaction by manipulating how you want them to read your moves and exploiting lapses in thought and shifting your strategy accordingly. It's something made possible for every player with its diverse game types and characters and a high only few will know more than once, but a chance given to everyone at any time. It's this understanding of player and competitive goals that makes ARMS so special and easy to access for newcomers, bringing harmony between both as well as others online. It's an experience, I imagine, for many others will be the same, even if that wall might have intentionally been placed a bit back behind the player's starting point to make the experience more welcoming. Sure, not everyone will have it easy at first, but that will make the moment you break through something grand. That's the beauty of ARMS, everything is built to give the player a chance at creating their own story, their own adventure that pushes them to their limits and beyond to make each online experience something to remember and worth cherishing. Of course, there will always be some exploits in fighting games that can sour an experience. As it stands now, grabs seem a bit overpowered to the point some players will rely on them alone, teammates hitting you in the middle of finishing a fight is never fun, and the rope binding players together kind of sucks. But all that can be fixed with fine tuning in the community as the players develop and come to understand each game type and each other better. But even when all is said and done, ARMS is a joy worth experiencing and something I hope you can join me in playing and something I'm very much looking forward to playing again. Thank you all so much for watching, much love, and I'll see you in the next one.